first layer of a green roof is a leak-free roof membrane. As explained in part two of this video series on building a green roof, two small leaks were found by international leak detection using electronic field vector mapping. With these leaks successfully repaired, the Furbish company began the process of creating Swarthmore College's third green roof on Kemp Hall. The next layer is a protection fabric rolled on top of the roof to shield the roof membrane and provide greater water retention. After the initial layer of protection fabric, a strip of coarse ballast stone is placed along the perimeter of the roof. As you can see from these images, the stone was lifted onto the roof using a large crane. These ballast stones serve as a buffer zone between the growing media with plants and the edge of the roof. They prevent soil from splashing over the edge during heavy storms, create a positive drainage flow to the center of the roof, and provide a level of protection for the plants and growing media against the wind. On this same layer, plastic drainage boxes and channels are placed over existing roof drain. Drainage boxes and channels protect the drains from being clogged with debris and help with maintaining a clear path to and around the drains. These boxes can also be opened and cleaned for maintenance, as well as stack several layers high depending on the thickness of the growing media on each roof. We've got a nice little hatch on top in case you're curious what's going on in your drain. And it, uh, it screws on and locks on. You don't want anybody messing with it. So, yeah, so we're going to fit these all down the roof there. You can see. Basically, on every side, there's a little triangular piece that you can pop out if you like, and that allows for the drainage uh, conduit to, to fit into. A third layer consists of appropriately titled the drainage layer. This layer is much lighter and finer textured than the ballast stone found around the perimeter of the roof. This layer of heat expand shale called Solite was donated by the same Swarthmore College graduate owned company who provided the growing media for the Alice Paul Green Roof. The solite layer helps drainage and provides an additional area for roots to grow into. The fourth layer is a repeat of the first layer. This second layer of fabric is slightly thinner than the first layer and is designed to work as a filter. The main task of this layer of protection fabric is to prevent fine particles of growing media from migrating into the drainage layer below. The next growing media is placed on the roof. This product from RoofLite is lifted onto the roof in large super sacks and is engineered for extensive roof. To learn about the differences between extensive and intensive roofs, view part one of this video series. The growing media of green roofs must be heavy enough not to be dislocated by wind or flowing water, stable to give plants significant hold, should not shrink or become too compact, should be resistant to frost and fire, retain rainwater, and drain excessive water, as well as provide the right amount of nutrients for the plants. The roof light layer is evenly spread at two inches thick throughout the roof. In the semi-intensive areas of the roof, a layer of eight to ten inches thick is created. The final layer of the green roof is plants. Check out part four to see how to plant the green roof.